Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, turtles and frogs, goldfish and sandals, I have betrayed you today. It's a dark day on YouTube, at least in my small corner of it. I have decided to install MB on my test server. Furthermore, I decided to test MB against Plex. So yeah. Before I get too far into this video, I do want to say that I have a sponsor, and that is .tech Domains. It turns out they're turning two years old this week, and they want to celebrate the fact that they've already got 250,000 domain name registrations so far with developers, startups, and tech heads around the world. During this celebration, they are offering a two-year .tech domain for only $14.99. That's two years for like 85% off. So if you want to fly your tech flag, now is the time to do it. Just go to www.get.tech and use the promo code Jason with the number two at the end and get two years of .tech domain registration for only $14.99. Moving on from that though, let's get to the meat and potatoes here. I installed MB on my test server. That's right, I did it. I wanted to do a few different tests, but I ended up focusing on one thing and one thing only, transcoding. Now with Plex, the reason why it's attractive to a lot of people is its ability to transcode on the fly. That allows you to you know, watch on multiple different clients throughout your household, throughout the world, and not have to worry about file formats or you know, supported formats by your clients and or the server. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, it just works, it's amazing, I love it, that's why I'm here. But with MB, it's, well, it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, MB is like a, 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 a I don't wanna say a Plex clone, but it's almost like Plex. I have to say, personally, I like the way Plex looks better, but this is not a review on MB software itself. This video is specifically for transcoding. And I wanna jump right into the numbers, but before I do that, I wanna tell you how I tested it. Just like before I installed it on my test server, that is an i7-3770 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 250 gigabyte SSD with no attached spinning hard drives. That means that the media and the transcoding folder is both stored on the same SSD, which is the host drive for the operating system. System. And in this particular case, the operating system was Windows, or Windows 7 to be exact. But, and the reason why I did that is actually very simple. It was already installed and I didn't want to have to install a new operating system. So, yeah. Now the only difference here is that with my previous test, I did limit the amount of processing power by disabling hyperthreading. In this test, I did not do that. I figured I'm running on Windows 7. It's probably not going to be putting up crazy numbers because I've already tested Windows against something like FreeNAS, for example. So I just wanted to go with Windows and keep it unlocked, make sure nothing was keeping it hindered for whatever reason, and here we are. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the numbers. First up, MB. With MB, I was able to get six transcoded streams at the same time, and I was not able to start well, okay, I was not able to reliably play another direct stream on top of that, but I was able to get six transcoded streams at the same time, reliably. Moving on to Plex, and before you guys close out this video, make sure to watch just a little bit longer. I was able to get seven transcoded streams at the same time, seven. Whoop, whoop. And just like MB, I was not able to start another direct stream on top of that. So I was able to get a total of one transcoded streams more than MB with Plex, however, Oh, there's always that however, that but, that well. There's a plot twist here. And that plot twist is I use default settings. Default settings with the public release for both software platforms. Actually, I don't know if MB has like a beta release thing. I'm sure they probably do, but. The point is, is that with MB that there is actually support for Intel Quick Sync, which is not supported with Plex, at least as far as I know. I know they're doing the GPU thing, but I don't think that's, yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't. Either way, I was unable to find any kind of quick sync help guide on the Plex website and or was not able to find any kind of settings. So I'm about 99.97% sure Plex does not support quick sync. So as some of you might have guessed, if you are a little familiar with quick sync, I was able to get different results with the MB Media server than I had before. And those results are 10. That's right, I was able to get 10 transcoded streams with the MB Media Server once I enabled Quick Sync and set the cores to max. Although I don't think the whole core thing mattered as much as the Quick Sync thing did, or really at all. And technically I was kind of able to start a direct stream on top of that. 
However, it was a little flaky. So I'm just gonna back that down to a solid 10 transcoded streams at the same time. And since Plex doesn't have any option to enable Intel Quick Sync or have any support for it whatsoever, yeah. That officially means that in my test of my, my specialized test where I focus specifically on transcoding, MB was able to pump out more streams than Plex was. Now, I do have to say this, and I didn't run this side by side and test it. I might do that in another video, but I do feel a little bit like maybe the video quality itself on the MB Intel Quick Sync was a little bit lower than it was on Plex. Now keep in mind though, when I'm doing these tests, I'm keeping everything consistent. I'm taking the same Back to the Future movie file and I am you know, transcoding that down to two megabits per second and 720p. This is an option that is available on both servers for the same bit rate. So the, the tests are accurate as far as going from the original to two megabits on each. The only thing is, is with the Intel Quick Sync on MB, it was a little pixelated and weird when it kind of started or, you know, maybe it temporarily throttled. I'm not entirely sure. But I do know that there were some times where I'm just like, wow, this is not very watchable. And I know what you're thinking. I'm a Plex addict and I'm trying to find a reason to hate on MB and you might be absolutely correct. And again, I haven't actually put these side by side, you know, taken screenshots, compared it pixel to pickle, pixel. <laughs> I could be mistaken, but maybe I'll cover that in another video. Either way, Officially, MB has beat out Plex and the sheer number of transcoded streams it can pump out from a, I think, 19 megabit movie file going all the way down to two megabits per second. Now, what does this mean for the space-time continuum? I have no idea. I literally think that it could explode, but I had to report it either way. In my quest for scientific data and enlightenment, I had to go here. I had to test it out and I had to see what it's about. Also, I had like 15 people message me about it. So, I mean, that... It's not a lot, but I mean, it's a lot to me, you know, I'm like one guy, there's like 15 of them, you know, like a gangbang or something. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my test, what I should do moving forward or any additional tests that you'd like me to run on the same test server that I have set up right now. I do have a couple in the hole though that I'm thinking I'm gonna test out depending on if this video is well taken or not. So if you like this video, definitely click like and subscribe below. Let me know if you wanna see some more future tests. I will definitely look into it if it is interesting to you. And of course, if you dislike this video, you could always use the YouTube's brand new feature of quick dislike, which is Alt F4 on your keyboard. It, uh, it's very efficient. Okay, I'm just kidding. It's have you ever played a game online and someone just like puts in chat, you know, hey, how do I do this? And you're just like, oh, Alt F4, it's easy. And then it's like player logged out. I've never done that. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.